Alright guys, today we are going to look at the new Cutlass Black. I did a video not that long ago, before 3.0, just kind of going over the older model and what was to come. So now we're going to take a look at the new one. And as you can see, it's bugged. So let me try to respawn it real fast. See if my other one has all the parts. Okay, we're good to go. And as you can see, it's a lot bigger now. It's definitely a lot more powerful too. The old one had what was it? Three size three guns, and then the turrets were two size threes as well. So you had five total. Now you can have a total of six: two on the turret, two in the behind the uh, cockpit, and then two up front. You also got a total of 24 size 2 missiles now, which is a big jump over the last versions. They only had 8. The front guns currently are gimbaled S2s. There's an issue with swapping them out, so you're kind of stuck with them right now. But once SIG gets it fixed, you'll have uh, 6 size 3 guns. It's pretty powerful, considering what the other ships have. It's definitely not a lot sleeker, a lot nicer looking ship. Especially the engines, those things look really good. Alright, we'll take a look inside. You've got room for currently you can fit a Nox, a Dragonfly, or your Grey Cat inside. You can actually do two of each. Or, you know, switch it up, vice versa, one there, one there. These are your mag plates where the vehicles can lock down. Uh, the Ursa will not fit due to how narrow the ramp is for starters to try and go up the wheels are too wide but then once you got up here to the top anyways your drop seats we'll call them which you've got six for you know dropping off uh, infantry mercenaries or just carting people around those would also block it so unless those can fold up in the future which I don't think that's an option right now no you're uh, out of luck these Cyclones, probably not going to fit either, but um, maybe. Uh, the X1 will definitely fit, because it's smaller than the Dragonfly. This is basically your cargo hold. You can do 46 SCU, which a lot of people think that's not that much, but it's a good amount of cargo. If you're uh, hauling the right supplies, you can definitely do uh, you know, 200 to 600,000 credit runs. you got your side doors here for quick exit. Due to the buggy nature of the Dragonfly right now, it's actually the best way to get it out of the ship once you put it in. Because uh, once you power it up, it kind of goes haywire and backing up is pretty painful. So you can just have these doors open and then fly it right out the side. Uh, up here is the habitation area slash cockpit slash entrance to the turret. Let me go ahead real quick and just see if I can power it on in the hangar so we can get a better view. Hello and welcome aboard your trade interplanetary craft. Your systems are online. Alright, so we're kinda in a damaged state, so the lights aren't as bright as they normally would be. But you can see the actual damage looks really good. You got steam coming out of the vents here and the overhead vents. There was the fire back here in the uh, cargo bay. We'll start with the turret, if I can figure out how to get in it. Maybe you can't get in it. No, wait a minute. There we go. So that's definitely an improvement over the old turret. Uh, those of you who had been in it know that you were basically limited on your view between you know, these two struts right here. You didn't have any of the side view. You didn't have any overhead. You've got the option to toggle your fire mode now, so you can basically fire the guns which you're used to, or you can uh, alternate fire where your left gun fires and your right gun fires, etc. That's the turret. Definitely an improvement. The turret still needs some work in general, but it's definitely a lot easier to track targets and uh, hit targets. 
So another cool thing about the Cutlass, I really haven't tested it out in other ships because this is mainly the only thing I'm flying right now. But the atmosphere in here, you know, is entirely operational. So you can basically hop out of your spacesuit into your civilian clothes if, if you want to. There's really no need to right now, but just if you want to do that. You can take them off uh, while you're in flight, while you're in space, while you're on any of the planets. And the atmosphere uh, inside the ship will keep you alive, you won't die. All the doors can be open while you do it, and you still uh, live. So the shielding, I guess, is in place to keep the atmosphere inside. Next, you've got your two beds, which are our logout points. The feature's currently not working 100% in the PU. Uh, you're supposed to be able to log out in the bed. And then when you log back in, uh, you will spawn in the bed you logged out on. But um, I've, I've only gotten to work once. So uh, they've got to get some work done on that still. But you know, typical bed. And I'm going to be stuck into that. The animations could use a little polish, but overall the unit looks nice. Here you've got the weapon racks, which I will show you that they do work. You can store your guns on them. But just be warned that you will not get the gun back, because there is a bug right now. I don't know if I can even pull my guns out of my hangar. Nope. Okay, I can't pull guns out in here. But basically, you pull your gun out, you walk up to the weapon, weapon rack, and you'll have the option through inner thought to place it on the rack. You'll go through the animations, you'll unsling it, place it there, and bam, your gun's there. But when you go to try to pick it back up, which anyone can do, because it's visible to everyone, your character will start having seizures and basically just spin out until you disconnect from the server. So if you just want to look at it, cool, go ahead and put it there, but don't try to pick it back up because you will crash. Over here is going to be your gear lockers, which they don't, they're not operational right now, but you can store your flight suit, armor, civilian clothes. Got some other boxes here for storage, which I'm hoping uh, as they you know, get further along with item 2.0, we'll be able to actually put things in there. But as of right now, they're just display. Got another one over here. Got uh, what's that, emergency supplies. And up here you've got the co-pilot and the pilot seat, which in my opinion, the co-pilot has a much better view. You can really you know, see everything around you. I think they'll have a real advantage for spotting things for uh, like search and rescue operations or just trying to pick out targets on the ground. Um, pretty much the same layout. You've got all your screens. You can change them as needed. Your comms. Now I'm hoping in the future with the flight stick being here that you'll be able to transfer control of the ship to the co-pilot because ideally this would be the best spot to fly the ship from. If they ever do that, this is where I'll be sitting when I'm flying the ship. And then next you've got the pilot seat, which you can see right there. Unlike the old animation where the chairs slid over and you know once one person got in you weren't getting out or you both were getting out. You can get in from either side now and the seats just raise straight up. So that issue's been eliminated. The glorious fan from the old Cutlass is gone, but we did get a box fan replacement. Can't actually turn it on or do anything with it, but hey, it's there. Nostalgia. Got a little bit more screens. Uh, and then again, you got your radar here and all your HUDs information. You know, it's still a good view. A lot of people complain about it. They can't see anything because of this console here, but I mean, not every ship is going to have a, a MISC prospector view, so they just need to get over it and learn how to adapt. It's fine. Nothing wrong with the ship as far as the view goes. That is the Cutlass and hope you guys liked it. Uh, we'll do a couple more videos later in the week on some of the other ships. I don't have many at the moment due to loaners, but take care.